Howdy guys, welcome back to BIG Photography. This is Ben and today we're going to talk about something that I wouldn't say I do it frequently, but it's definitely something that I do every once in a while and that's going to be doing uh, kind of head and body swaps, like taking the body from one shot and putting it on the head of another or vice versa. So what do I mean by that? So for example, let's say you have a shot like this where you really love her expression, she's got a great smile, but then maybe you like the pose on this shot you know she's in heels her legs look longer the angles are a bit more exaggerated but you don't like that her head's tilted so what do you do well you take the head from this shot the body from this shot and you combine them into one great shot so that's what we're going to do today and i'm going to show you how i do it in affinity photo right now All right, guys, welcome back. So when would you ever need to do this? Like, when would you ever need to replace body and heads? Now, it's something that I wouldn't say I do all the time, but I do do it. And if you've looked at my Instagram or even watched my other videos, you know that I shoot a lot of fitness, which usually involves full body shots. And there's often times when, oh, I really love this pose, but their, their expression just wasn't really great. But their expression in this shot is perfect. So what do you do? You just combine the two. So for this example, I'm going to use these two shots and actually both of these shots are perfectly fine. I'm just really doing it as an example to show. All right. Now, even though we're just going to be taking the head, I like to go ahead and take the whole body. So using a lasso or the freehand selection tool, I'm going to go ahead and just select her whole body here. And you're going to see why in a second. And with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit command C to copy. Let's go to that other image and hit command V to paste. And here you can see right off the bat, this is a smaller shot. Maybe I backed up a bit, maybe she backed up. Either way, she's not the same size. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to get the size about the same. It's always gonna be hard to get it perfect, but we want it as close as we can. So usually I do that by lowering the opacity and just kind of overlapping them. And you can just kind of free, you can just kind of like freehand it, like kind of eyeball it. Usually I'll look for things in the body I can line up. So for example, maybe like the heel of her foot, maybe I can kind of line it up with the knee. And if you do need to, you can kind of rotate things to get them to match. So if I rotate there to kind of see if I can get the knee and the heel of the foot lined up, that looks pretty good. Let's bring this back. Other things I might use, uh, jewelry and accessories are really useful, for example, like these earrings, like even though the angle's a bit different, the height shouldn't change too much. So maybe this could actually be a bit smaller if I wanted it to. And then because in both these shots, in both these shots, uh, she's smiling, we can kind of line up the parts of her face so I can line up the eye with the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the lips like so I think that actually looks pretty good so I think we're actually pretty close to about the same size right yeah yeah, it looks good okay so with that being said let's go ahead and try to position the head roughly where we want it we can always tweak it later but I'm gonna go ahead and maybe just use the shoulders as a reference I can see that the peak of her shoulder now one shot her shoulders are kind of down the other shot her shoulders are up but for the most part, the shoulders are about right here. So I think we're gonna go ahead and just place it like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn the opacity back up to 100. And let's zoom out. And then let's go ahead and make a mask. So clicking down here to make a mask. Let's invert that mask. I'm gonna to go to layer invert. And then with that mask selected and a paintbrush with white, we are going to paint in that new head, like so. And I mean, already, like from a distance, you would look at this and nobody would even second guess, but we need to go in here and make it look as perfect as we can. Now, there's a few things you'll notice right off the bat is the background is a little bit different. So we could come back with a black paintbrush to kind of paint out this background. But you can see because our head was tilted, some of the previous or the original head is coming through. So sometimes what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer uh, below our head or the new head. And I'm going to just go ahead and clone stamp out uh, a lot of 
the original head. Just I'm going to go ahead and just clone stamp it out so it kind of looks like the background. That way we don't accidentally have some of the original head peeking out here. And if we go too far, uh, we can always bring it back. And of course you can see that um, you know, the, the tones don't match up exactly. You know, later on I would spend more time to clean it up, but we can switch to a low flow brush and just kind of help blend it in, blend it in better. So it blends in better, but again, I'm not going to waste time doing this now because it's not the point of the video, but I think you guys know how to do this. Okay. So now when we put that new head in, we can take our paint brush, paint black, and we can go pretty much right up to the edge of the hair and not have to worry about uh, parts of the old head coming in like so. All right. So we're going to do it like that again. Like when you're doing it, you would take your time and really line up things the way you want. But for now we're good. Okay. So some of the things we have to fix. Uh, the first thing is because in the original shot here, her head is tilted and or so she's turned. And so she has that, I don't know what that's called, that kind of neck muscle thing. Now, obviously when her head's going forward, that shouldn't be there. So we need to make sure that with the new head and with our paintbrush, switch to white and this back on, we need to make sure that we have also the neck from the new head and also her collarbone because I want to make sure that the collarbone and the neck from the new shot is going to be in there. And then let's see how far we can go up to here. Now, sometimes you're going to have to be a little creative because like I said, one shot, her shoulders are up. One shot, her shoulders are kind of down. So you can see this is the new shoulder, but let's go ahead and bring back the old shoulder and just kind of, we'll do something like that. And let's see, let's go ahead and bring back as much of the chest, the new chest that we can before we get down to uh, the edge of this, not a shirt, but I guess leotard. Okay, so there I can see I'm coming into the new collar. And I want to go ahead and keep the collar on the original body. So let's just go ahead and back up and we'll go right up to the edge here. And then what we can do later is maybe we're going to have to switch to a low flow brush to kind of blend it in. So it blends a bit nicer. And then if we still have some problems like this, we can create a new layer and kind of clone stamp to fix that. But for the first pass, let's just try to get as close as we can to the edge so this is good this actually goes all the way right up to yeah i think the the new head the collars down here okay so all right my keyboard's like way off to the side so i keep looking over my keyboard to get my buttons right but okay that's good all right so it's only this one that's a bit messed up so let's just do like that okay and then we have a few little things here the neck we have to fix so let's see let's this is all that looks good. actually lined up pretty well and that looks pretty good I can see like it's a little bit different but yeah no one's gonna no one is going to even notice that so that looks fine to me and then maybe just here I think what I might do is make a brand new layer and just do like a soft a low flow brush and then clone stamp to kind of just blend in that. You could also use a dodge layer to kind of lighten it up, dodge and burn it. Kind of do something like this. And then I think we are good to go. Let's zoom out. All right, so that is that before and after. Now, I think that if you looked at this shot, nobody would say, hmm, the head looks kind of funny. No, it looks right. I, I kind of like the way her head's kind of like tilted off to the side. She's got a great smile. The pose is great. Everything looks perfect. Now, like I said, both these shots are fine on their own. I'm using this shot as mainly an example purpose. So uh, I think that's it for this video, guys. Like it's a really quick little thing, something that I do fairly frequently uh, when I need to, but Again, um, hope 
this video helps you out if you ever need to do something like this in your pictures. Uh, I don't think, I'm not really too of a purist where I feel like, oh, you know, I do too much photo manipulation. No, I mean, it's the same model, same shot, same lighting, same camera, same everything. It's just I'm just combining two parts of a shot that are probably taken a few seconds apart and just putting them together to make one really great shot. Uh, so, yeah, that is that. Uh, all right, guys. Well, anyways, thank you very much for watching. Uh, appreciate you. And I guess I will see you in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.